Good morning, or whatever it is, wherever you are. I'm trying to remember where the, heck, where the heck we were on this. Uh, let's see, is my program all hacked up? This is the map process script. Okay, it is going to test. It is doing local. <clears throat> It is operating on a small data set with multiple files. We're only doing them from file placements. And our notes say the thing we need to do is we have an index file. So we've got our spans. It gives this period, it tells us And these are keys into these. Tells us if we need a base file for the map logs up until then, the seed to use. And these things give us a index file which has only coordinates. So am I reading these indexes at all yet? Uh, this is probably, well, map log. I've done this in a little bit. Okay, I've not even got the point of doing indexes for those. There are different zoom levels. Means they're going to have their own tile lists. But they never need to worry about older. Well, you never have older map logs than the period you're viewing. But you might need a final placement for that. Well, the larger final placement will be good for that. Maybe not? Okay, so we've got read index, which only does a two part split right now. And I mean, I could, I could throw out all of my current formats in it. So you have ardor that we're writing to. The zoom level you're reading. Uh, objects, floors, dir. All right, so if we write it, We can currently bootstrap things, write it with this dir. Uh, when we get back to reading, well, what index are we reading? Base span. Okay. Uh, we will somehow be needing to, well, I guess what we would read this as. Boards. This dir timestamp. For now. I write it with this dir, read it with this dir, then we can actually you have a base span. There's our read. Uh, what is our end right now? Uh, 
Okay, we... Write, write the index, read the index, right, because there's multiple files here, so it's sort of self-contained. Probably is no base span there. Right, right, okay. So it's only this thing resuming from itself right now. We're not actually dealing with the continuous state yet. Uh, now, in these index files, I could conceivably do multiple kinds of lines to say, okay, here's all of the coordinates. Uh, okay, so this is multi map log. Uh, so you're doing like this one. And you might even be able to make a case for conservation of X or Y. In addition to conservation of, because like these would all write as one, is one timestamp. <clears throat> that would be some overhead if they were actually scattered. So, and, and, well, we've got at least a carriage return separator. So right now, we're always going to write this before we read it. We could match the format. All right, so the set is sorted. Right now, we're only writing one timestamp, so we don't, we don't actually have any particularly messy problems here. Uh, unfortunately, real data is going to get large. I'm going to need to like dummy up some data. So this would, we don't have objects, keys, floors, keys. Those don't have any time I'm gonna need some kind of like look aside thing for that because this is just these are just gonna be like a dict. Maybe I could do like some kind of subclass of a dict that had information on it. <laughs> or I guess if it's well, if it's a dict, I would have to be careful to throw out the keys at the right place. But it is just a string at some level. Well, no, it's an array. Still, it can be heterogeneous. No, but I need that per. Yeah, that that would be the sub object, which. Right, then it would be the coordinates within. <laughs>
given the shape of our current area, uh, we might expect y coordinates to be good for longer runs. But right now, our automatic sorting, <clears throat> which we could fix, is going to sort us by x. <clears throat> Well, this is a pair. You could map it in swap, and you should be careful uh, decomposing it. <clears throat> oh, except that I actually need to check the arrays here. I have to either have to swap it back or just implement the start myself. I presume this is going to be an AB. And this might have to be like a sort by. Now that's actually going to want an integer. Uh, I want minus, uh, I guess I avoid the conditional here. Wait, isn't there? Don't we have an operator that does this? And I mean, that's one negative one, so it doesn't need to be 10. I mean, really, even two is probably enough. Okay, that does sort by y, and it goes from negative up, which sure, why not? Uh, then Uh, I actually do. Oh, I read these specific tiles out of there. Okay. So that would actually break things. Uh, so we need out. Right now, it is 
always going to be that. Oh, because that's a dock. Uh, then we do. Uh, and this data sets, like I couldn't do each Y in a line. And just a character is a character. All right, so this will break on the later part. Oh, uh, did I do the later one or the earlier one? This is the earlier one that should have been resumed. And it wrote nothing? How did it write nothing? Well, okay, I still forgot my end line there. You should probably be an end line too. Two out. Yep. That's why I wrote nothing. Oh, well, it read something. <laughs> oh. I've been calling this JSON. It's not a JSON file. Oh, I didn't actually set. <laughs> I guess I could just crash. Hmm. Maybe it would be easier to follow with one line. Is that some of the lines are going to get really long. Uh, what does that look like? The result in the black line. I'm surprised it's really well. And we'll end up having to do a, once we figure out where to store our time information, we'll have to do a similar thing where we do chunks based on this. Hmm. And then I, I could come back and do difference encoding on all of these. Uh, but you need to be able to reread this. So it's not, not so simple.
Uh, and then you are a D plus. Actually, I could probably say just then. Because this is almost well, this is almost where I need to. Have a utility class for this. Uh, so it's not dir, it's just. <laughs> and this is where uh, is it shift or control? Shift. So if we have the blah blah blah. And we want one character. Uh, one, two, two, three. Actually, is there per chance? Nope. I mean, there might be a similar method to that, but it's not called drop. Uh, I guess this would be next. Uh, now, a line now is going to be an entire row. And we're going to say that y is parts dot shift or and shift puts it on. And then for each I guess these are tile. That loaded zippy da. <laughs> Are we still outputting this? Yeah. S oh, TX. Yeah, we won't find that file. All right, that was a bunch of coordinates. Generally seemed reasonable. Uh, now we're not actually using doing any timestamp stuff anywhere. Uh, 
I guess... I could just avoid the map lock, but I'd probably just commit it here, and then I might be able to use it elsewhere. Yeah, not in him. Well, handle. Uh, all right, so this is just a format that includes a single timestamp. And again, we need to, maybe this entire thing is. Uh, so somewhere in my structures here, which. So when I load an actual file. I load up the index from the previous time. It doesn't have a timestamp. When we have timestamps on there, we will. Out, expect to be forgotten. Uh, but in order to sort of maintain that time, so we can eventually do that, it gets me the. Uh, oh wait, this is the tiles. So given a tile list, and you see this gets a directory. So maybe the way we actually have to do this is to return a rather than the tile having a timestamp, have a list of times with their individual tiles that would work with this loading function. But ultimately, we just need the big pool of tiles the way we currently work. Work with this thing. So objects and floors give us just a plain old new hash table. <clears throat> Uh, a hash table is expected to contain coordinates. I kind of don't want to just put a key in there because it'll get confused with indexing the coordinates. Uh, but this thing could be could be something else. It could be. Maybe a subclass of hash, uh, if we don't ever need to do too much hash things with it. Anything that would create a new object? Mostly we just set keys on it, which should be fine. Uh, that needs to be accessible by Of course, if I made a specific structure,
because uh, right now I'm just doing this sort of text index by coordinate. Well, any tile that gets touched is going to have its timestamp up. Oh, that's right. I eventually wanted to lazy load these, at which point anything that was loaded at all would have the new timestamp. But the old timestamps would still be in our index of things that were on the map at this point. Yeah, so you probably want to go to lazy loading the data. I think we. Mm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, resuming for my other zoom level. I know it's only 24. I'm going to require these other levels to have keyframes. Well, or do I set it up? So that we figure out what the 24 is that will represent the space. Let's get a little problem solved. Hmm. Okay, so you're going to be the base tiled. That just loads up everything that might be there. That's going to be that index file. Uh, we don't just, well, you read that file and it has timestamps. So maybe I have to return a thing that can lazy fetch. Well, that brings us back to the question of if we have like an object representing these things, because... Hmm. I actually do floors and other tiles separately. Floors aren't going to change very much. Well, but that's essentially a file fetch. Some sort of object that represents the potential to be a tile there. It will get lazy loaded if it actually gets written to. It would still have the tile age and coordinate. Write out the index. Hmm. 
This must be a debugging map. A, B, I need to have a thing that's a index that has a read and a write. It knows its current timestamp and its zoom. And then you can ask about tiles. And if it loaded up something that was a tile, then it cracks that somewhere that can be passed down to the loader now how does this work with map logs yeah you have no base You have a base timestamp, which we're going to have to get 24 and, and we're going to have to subset that appropriately. I think I'm able to do that with the, it's a, Different renderer. Grab the super tile and get, it, get, get a chunk out of it. Map logs are just going to write because there could be natural objects there, there could be placed objects there. Uh, so you get your span path. All right, because this is all tied in to the output path set up for placements. Well, if you define these things, you pass in the path you want to store it at. I might want to make some of these... Like sub objects. Because the index in particular seems to be getting kind of messy. Well, okay, so this has write tiles and read tiles. Probably you'd want to do that at the level of a single file, maybe? But if we put an interface on that, I only thing, well, if it had been updated, write out the updated tiles. Not updated and hopefully never even load them up. You have to be back in the index. But yeah, we want to encapsulate the idea of this bit that might 
make things a little bit awkward. Uh, does that need to be a separate file file? Or a separate code file? Well, we can start here. Uh, I think list tiles is an echo of an earlier version of this. Where we were loading everything from the previous time step. And it was like, oh, that will accumulate every tile forever. Which, at some point, if we keep on heading west, could get kind of obnoxious. Plus all the old tutorials and stuff that will kind of fall out. I guess I got map logs. Uh, you would have to have the output path put into you. That's prefix. There's zoom. Oh, you need to have a file system. So list files is probably old. Uh, this is output final placements. Uh, when you're directly a so This is like um, And you are going to have and I see to find here I think you're going to have objects, but you're going to have some of the rest of this. You need a file system, you need an output path. Uh, you are probably going to have... Hmm, interesting. So when we read an index, it's going to be the previous... ...level. When we write it, it's going to be at this level. So dir might have to stay an argument. And then you're going to have some data, which is... Well, this, this can determine how to structure it internally. The interface would just be somehow coordinates. I guess it would maybe just be tiles. There's like the index itself, which is just coordinates. And then might have a way to do I should keep the tiles? Well, the tiles, if we come down to it, get split into floors and objects on deserialization. That's almost its own little file. 
Now you'd want an interface through something like this to know which one to fetch. Or if it had already been loaded and all that jazz. Well, okay, so this... There's the thing that's... Oh, tile. Tiles.e. And then we were pulling that information out of floors and objects. So it's not, make that an object. Each tile would have to have floor as an object. If we operate through the index, we can s maybe abstract that to the point that we could do that swap. Uh, let's see, but right now we get those as tile.floors, tile.object. That would actually have to change the way tiled works. I may have to have flags to just like turn off certain processing because I don't think we're going to use that at all. Well, we still sort of use the inter intermediate state to optimize the placement logs. That would kind of interfere with that. But I'm going to be loading tiles incrementally. A tile is both a floors and an objects. <laughs> and right now that is owned by tiled placement log because it's like kind of generating those out of nothing. Yeah, and other times we kind of deal with both, but this does mean no. If one was empty, uh, so this is because this is an awkward thing to change. Well, I mean, floors and objects are properties of this thing. So if it started treating that as like some sort of object behind the scenes. Then floors and objects could be little references into that layer. And then, then you could switch the syntax once that was a thing.
Hey Penguin, how's it going? Complex things are complex. Um, kind of wanting to make some rather drastic data modeling changes here. Crystal. Uh, was Crystal the Ruby-ish compiled language? Huh? Yeah, I haven't really been following it. It's good to hear that it's uh, good enough to switch over to. Was that based on a runtime system? You know, like JVM or one of those? Is that not a runtime system? Okay. LLVM. Okay, there you go. So effectively binary. But yeah, I figured you had to probably want to be on some kind of infrastructure. So if I make a tile thing. Tracks its floors and objects internally. I can have floors and objects here. Well, it's still gonna have to be an object to receive a array-like syntax. I'm not sure it can, be, it can be easily backed into the same thing. Although turning square brackets into Well, I guess if it returned an internal hash table from the tile object. Things would mostly just work. And then once I've got that much of a shim in place, I could maybe move to more of a method. Well, I could move to more of a method interface first. And then swap out the implementation. Uh, 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 and I was working on this where I had started extracting this thing. Okay, so I am doing a web map of uh, an online game. Uh, they started putting out uh, very, very detailed logs of all of the activity. I was originally just kind of doing like sort of generation information. And for a while, it was going in these very defined periods. They were called arcs, uh, where it would run for a while, the map would reset, and it was practical to process all of that in one chunk. <clears throat> uh, you know, even when there were breaks in the files, you could kind of fake it like it was one big file and carry on, which was a little messy, but it was the easiest solution. Uh, we are no longer getting regular resets now. So I have to be able to deal with more incremental processing, uh, which makes things surprisingly harder when you weren't configured for that up front. I guess maybe it would be a reasonable option to just kind of start from scratch, <laughs> to think of it, and just copy bits of code as needed. Uh, so I need to take this thing that was meant to load a file and 
chop it up into tiles and just run once through and get it to be able to sort of reload the previous state, update that, and not have a data set with unbounded growth as more and more of the map gets explored. Because uh, it won't be all under current current use. Uh, so this is the last point at which we had actual map data. Uh, I think there is a little bit of activity, so you can you can go in and see some stuff. Uh, and then if we go way out and get some recent data, Uh, you see, we, we've kind of got this movement across the map. Uh, there, there's some bell markers back here, people going back to, so it's stretching out a little bit, but only parts of the map are generally getting updated over time. Uh, and I expect this will continue traveling west. So I want to be, and then this data will, you know, if it, if it, if the server restarts and it hasn't been seen in a week, it will be erased. So like after two weeks or so, I should probably, of no activity, I should probably like kind of forget that these things were here for the forward going images. So, I mean, data is being generated. It's just, I can't reasonably process it right now. Uh, so I need to be able to reload that map data, or like reload like yesterday's data, update it as necessary, and write a new image, kind of keeping track of which tiles got touched and which tiles didn't. Uh, yeah, this is public. Uh, I could turn on a, a tile viewer thing in my local one, but it's not all set up to boot right now. I mean, it, it would be a few terminals to get it going. Not that big a deal. We go back. Uh, I mean, any art could be good. Go back to these. You can kind of, you can kind of, you can kind of see tiling going on as you move around, so you can get a sense of how big the chunks are. So I'm trying to sort out like having this like. Well, there, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, well, for just the changing data, let me see if I can get a... This was probably well, actually gradical. We'll get us down to yeah, at zero zero. For just the changing data, I think I can kind of ignore. <clears throat> uh, the previous state, because there I there's actually some bugs in the current version with natural objects. Uh, and just just overwrite things, and that kind of went silent. Because uh, I might have to replace natural objects that I don't not really sure if they're going to be there. Uh, so those I think I need to, to for you know a given day's changes just assume the first write to a tile is always going to be an actual write. Uh, but for the absolute checkpoint state that we use to base those changes on. Uh, I do need to be able to load up previous state uh, to have an accurate picture of it. Now I could summarize just what changed in this time step and then go load up the previous time step and that may load up the previous time step and that may load up the previous time step, which could become a lot of web requests. Is my concern there? Uh, especially if you have something that's very, very active. Uh, 
uh, it's like the there's the bell towns that people can find again easily. Uh, and I think some of those have been under some form of occupation, you know, for the past couple weeks. Yeah, what I what I'm working on is the back is the Ruby stuff that processes it to the files that we can just load. So this the the map itself is just kind of loading that pre-processed data. We're not loading the raw data. Uh, the raw, raw data is a single log file. It can get to many megabytes, and it involves some stuff that's way off to the side. Uh, the tutorial zones, they just kind of create a bunch of stuff out in nowhere. Uh, so, the, so the leaflet tiled system works fairly well for getting just the data you need. But I was not set up to sort of the, for the reload and resume process. So I have to get set up for it. Uh, one of the things I considered was doing a format where we treated each tile as own sort of like a miniature like movie file. And that doesn't really change the kind of processing I need to do, but it does take some of the pressure off having the master index. I mean, you could potentially in that case, like do a one pass that just splits out of the tiles and then go back and like update each tile. Uh, I'm currently putting the data on S3, so that's, that's more fetches and writes back to there. Maybe it's worth it. And then it's also more fetches when you're viewing the file or viewing the map because you have to get the, each tile's index and then like its base layer and its changes if you're viewing changes. Right now, you're either viewing static or you're viewing change and that's, that's one fetch per tile. So it's more more fetches for the map, and it's more fetches and writes for the map processor. So that's why I'm not doing that right now. Uh, but I... Uh, Times and content. Well, and that's pretty much what the tiles are. So if we go into the cache, uh, so these are, well, I mean, that, that's that number of kilobytes. That's megabytes. So that is a time period. And down here are the newer ones, where it's like one per day. I must have had a, must have had a server restart there. Uh, what I'm used to processing are things like this. You have a start time, uh, you have a delta time from that, uh, coordinates, and an object. The newer ones uh, also have a responsible player ID, which I'm going to be ignoring for now. Uh, so this is very much a time object format. I've uh, been, let's see, so these were the actual outputs. So a key placement, which is a, a snapshot. I dropped the time component because we don't need it, and I just did a very, very simple uh, coordinate object. This, this could do with some additional compression. Uh, if you were doing the animated version, and these exist at a couple zoom levels, so you can get more detailed. Um, I'm considered rearranging the individual data formats to something more like, okay, at this location, here's the time stream of it. So these get a start time, start coordinate, and an object, and then both times and I think locations are 
diffed with the previous, well, maybe maybe only maybe only times. Anyway, there's some difference compression. I think possibly some difference compression with these as well. And you get the farther out tiles. Uh, that can shrink things considerably. Yeah, so this is like out here, and then we just do diffs within the tile. That saves a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I've considered uh, looking at a possible alternate format of, okay, here's a coordinate. Uh, and then here's like timestamp object, timestamp object, timestamp object. Because in these map logs, you can have some some areas where there's lots and lots of activity in a, in a small space. Like, you know, these berry bushes are going to cycle a lot, the farm pot's going to cycle. Some places people are just going to be putting stuff, picking up stuff and putting it down a lot. So that might make sense, but I'm going to have to test it and see what the file sizes actually look like. So right now what I'm working on is the thing that would take a particular log file, uh, try and figure out what the previous time step state was. Eventually lazy load the previous state only for things where we actually changed it. Uh, while also keeping track of timestamps for what the most recent uh, thing that's still around is that has data. Uh, and then write out, you know, the old timestamps to see, so we can say what was there. Like, you know, this goes, this kind of goes quiet after a while. So these aren't going to change anymore if we had, you know, a couple of days of updates. Uh, so that won't change. Uh, and then also, you know, we updated some tiles. So those have to get written out again. And we want to record the timestamp that they were last updated as or the keyframe that they're going to be usable with. And all the code I have is not written to do any of that kind of resumption or tracking of tile timestamps. So I'm kind of trying to think my way through how we, how we kind of refactor towards that. And I was working on abstracting my index file a little bit. And if I only did the index file for now, that might lead us to some other things later. But I think I might need to have this thing managing uh, the tile loading so I know which tiles eventually get lazy loaded. So we would want this to say, okay, here's where we think our base frame is. Load that. I will eventually need some place to keep track of the timestamps of those. Uh, and then once we do that, which I, I'm not really tracking the timestamps yet. That's, yeah, that's not used. Because uh, I don't have a place to put it just yet. So that kind of means getting to like, tile objects or something. We can kind of keep around that metadata uh, about each one. Uh, or I guess I could have like, since I have objects and floors per tile, I could have time of this tile. That might kind of allow me to keep the current implementation elsewhere. And then if this ended up fronting or somehow mediating the fetches, then it could keep track of the fact that we're going to update that timestamp. Uh, so the read and the write, well, I guess if we're updating our timestamps, <laughs> Thank you. 
set time, get time. For a tile, Uh, yeah, this is probably possibly more relevant to the front end where we do have to do, uh, you know, current view of a tile. Uh, certainly if I end up with some sort, if I can work my way to some sort of abstraction of uh, an individual tile, uh, you know, having the timestamp that it was snapshotted at. Uh, I need to add a time to tracking the tiles somewhere. So when I get to having a thing that represents a tile somehow, then I will be able to store a time with it. The only thing we're really interested in is like the most recent, so we need to fetch the most recent content of it and then write out the things that were changed in the current time step. So right now I have started making changes. Uh, so I either need to abandon those or finish them. And this doesn't really add anything at the moment. It needs to keep the, needs to somehow format tiles. This is just a list of tiles right now. And this is where we would try to keep that, that time information. So this is just a list of tiles. I guess this could keep uh, time coordinate. And then for now, to maintain sort of an interface, we can just fetch only the list of coordinates and then look at how we kind of keep pushing the timestamp out. So in our simple test case, uh, yeah, you're working directly with objects and floors. We only care about tile lists. Well, the idea would be you would only have the object and floor tiles for things that got touched and loaded eventually. Uh, we would eventually want this. be something like that. And then that would end up being internal. <laughs> that I would then somehow merge that with the new stuff. to also get the older timestamps in our revised index. Or do I just like do this as timestamp of that tile? Similar to how objects and floors are indexes of stuff, and maybe if I can make a tile object, we invert those. Yeah, just I started doing this. I kind of wanted to finish that. I mean, I, 
I thought like, okay, well, if this thing is keeping track of which tiles are active, it might be a good place to, to do that abstraction. We can always come back to it. Uh, I started editing you. That's my only change right now. So right now we deal with floors and objects as two kind of parallel things. It made more sense when we were in the simpler version of stuff. Uh, we could probably do some points where we trans translate that. Uh, and also this is, this is getting these from another object which can provide that translation layer. The processor As floors, objects, maybe I'd also want to do that with placements. Since it's all going to be sort of related to the same tile. We can do it in here for now. And the individual tile is going to have its own versions of these. Uh, it, hmm. And then I had, yeah, the copy key. How did I do loading of base tiled? Read tiles. Okay, that gave me a new tiled placement log where we are directly operating on, it, which is something we're gonna have to work on. We have an abstraction layer for that, and it might kind of work. Well, I might have to convert these into methods to... Actually, I think that might... <laughs> I convert them into methods. I don't just have floors and objects. But maybe I need to change the interface first, before I can change the backing implementation. Because I need... It'd be kind of weird to have... An object that does a, it has to be an object support array indexing or bracket indexing. And that would just kind of have to have a reference to the parent object to go get the stuff. Now, if floors goes and, well, no, because it can't return an object. Well, it could, it could generate a new object from all of the tiles, but that would be really expensive to do every time, so that's kind of not good. So maybe the first step is actually to change our interface. We're just doing direct access to everything right now. Uh, so, to keep us, well, a somewhat honest. Um, so I need some kind of interface to these, but we would have things like do a drop in, well, without having an actual tile object. Convert the existing calls, have something like 
at these coordinates, but the tile coordinates, inner tile coordinates, get or set this value for all of these things. So we're gonna leave this here for now. So there's the big thing. Uh, actually, that's all, that self is, it kind of developed from an individual script. Okay, so that's all our big process. I just kind of got the individual stuff and then the class stuff. Uh, floors. We need to be able to get a tile and individual coordinate and set it. Oh, and then we've got the, the copy option, op, option. So get it, set it, set it. Okay. And then your append, append, and your append only. So in order to be able to bridge this over to an object, we kind of need to have an interface here. Uh, <laughs> for a straight up attribute, you can do get and set, but we're not really. Not really there yet. Uh, so we've got a chord, we've got a position. And for now, and I might want to look into how I'm doing uh, indexing here. Because this is like all like reassembling. Yeah, you're all reassembling coordinates. You're all reassembling coordinates. I should probably just statically make that thing. First, uh, if I abstract it, I can't do that. And then placements is just appending the entire thing. So for what we've got, we could do X, Y, or we could do another, another pair. And th th these are things I might want to re-encode at some point uh, for now. I, I missed a quote. And then objects will look the same. And placements we only ever append to. Uh, now placements is just the tile coordinates and the log we're adding.
Hmm. You know, I might actually have to undo this for a little bit. Get the internal code working. And then worry about what kind of interface we expose. I guess if we only use like objects and floors at the very end, it's reasonable to do a big conversion on it. Oh, am I always doing tile X, tile Y? In which case it might make sense to pass those. Oh, now you see these, these do tile. So it's not always in bits. Let's deal with you. All right, so occupant is a get floor. Long dot X, long dot Y. Uh, well, I guess I can see a placement right here. Uh, oh, this is out dot add placement, tile X, tile Y. And out dot set floor. It's gonna be a lot like Right, this must be used in, in further down code. And then get object. And... Get floor. Uh, oh, I missed a delete. Uh, let's delete this key. Uh, okay, so this is going to be set floor, tile, and maybe once we have a tile object, we can come back and make these look nicer. Okay, so we still have the overwrite to deal with. Okay, out dot add placement. I could probably just construct a tile somewhere. Unless I'm tweaking coordinates somewhere.
Okay, that's all the objects. All right, so with the current interface, it's fine. We have a method to get these things. Well, as long as they don't request it too often, which I was able to be kind of, I didn't want to use this forget stuff. I don't want to redo a command and Things go haywire. <clears throat> Philly. All right, I uh, probably want to check my actual files on this one. Hmm. Is that, is that possibly real? Oh gosh, where was this? Seven, three, two. Oh, right, because I was breaking time stamps or time steps where I did not break them before. Possibly 189? Of course, there could have been activity in the other one. Okay, so the old one only had one thing there. What's been the start of uh, going beyond the rift? Eleven oh eight. Where did you come from? Oh, because I, I reset my changes. But it is definitely not a. Definitely not a JSON file. Those are JSON files. Oh, did I make some other... Yes, I did make some other internal changes to this, and then I kept on doing stuff. Uh, and those changes supported doing timestamps. Well, I need to, I need to do the file rearranging, uh, and then I just won't be able to when I get to the point where I can attach timestamps, I won't be able to just yet. Uh, 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 tiled. Okay, so that takes care of you mostly. Uh, the copy operation is going to change when the representation changes. The representation hasn't changed yet. Uh, what do... Okay, passed there. Tiled. This is when we're reading tiles. And so this would have to use 
that interface, anywhere we're dealing directly with the object. Uh, when we are dealing with these things, we can convert that to methods that do any appropriate translations to produce the data structure you were expecting. Although we eventually want to convert that to a tiled interface of sort two. I could even like create tiles for my objects and floors as an intermediate step. Tiled dot set floor. Tile dot set object. Okay, so that's an argument. Uh, the keys, so that would actually be a, a good place to maybe do something different in the future. Those are arguments, so we can get by for now. Uh, and then output map log. You are just passing the placements. So that could be abstracted out as well. Uh, I'm not going to, going to be straight up readers. And for now, sure. So now, if these methods support switching implementations, uh, then I could have a tile object internal to this. And all of these operations can get switched out. Uh, except the tile is going to have an internal representation that's going to be very much like that. Eh, I don't know if it's going to be public, but... Uh, is this still plural? Kind of. And so if, we're, if we end up loading something from a file, We're not just going to have a big old array of stuff to send to it. All right, so these don't need the initial hash creation of stuff at coordinate. Uh, you're an array. Now, maybe for the sake of keeping those interfaces, you should instead be something like, let's see, your, your the file is already going to have a coordinate. So really, you're just going to have x, y. but we need to be able to get and set. Ashley, can you do, 
Can you do setter with arguments? Strategy equals. No, that, that's a two part thing. you send yeah that's trying to do something different than what I want letter position allowed and you want mm, yeah you want that kind of multi-argument Uh, okay, this is exactly that same kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to be... You kind of need the set get thing again. So getting could do that. But we can't do like floor equals with arguments that I know of. So I'd actually run the method and then. Uh, 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 uh. Now, you would get to take over this bit of how we're kind of storing this internally. Or how we're indexing them. But then we're going to have to do something like set floor. I guess it goes with XY and do a space. And then we need the same thing. Oh, and we need to... Remove floor, as we saw. And I don't know, add placement is just, it just kind of is. Not a whole lot of ceremony there. So if you then have. Oh, should tiles know their own coordinates? Hmm. 
we're going to want them to know their own timestamps. Uh, you have a base. You initially have a start. I don't know if we ever S base. I don't know if a tile needs a base. Uh, now, would you have chords or would you have X, Y? I guess with either method I can... Uh, when we are creating a hash, we're going to be passing in chords. That can be easily split back out. Time is going to be our current time. Uh, current start time, just in case that matters. We've actually got a professor for that, and the key is our chords. And then we hopefully don't need these anymore. So then you go to tiles cord. Uh, oh, psh. apparently we need, there were no removals in that data set. Uh, no, not remove. Uh, oh, no, actually, I didn't do get on this. And then add placement. Oh, we misspelled this somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> I might actually be able to move some of this logic down to the tile. Well, except when I start getting into around logic. That might get hairy. But if we've got a line that's a regular placement, maybe it's just you know, append placement, and then this stuff all happens internally. Okay, now what we're missing is the ability to get back to these data structures that are currently used outside. Tiles.map. Uh... Okay, 
Okay, so tiles have their own coordinates. Uh, I can probably eventually use the tile X, tile Y properly. Maybe, we're not actually doing that yet though. We can change that, that implementation later. Tiles dot map. Tile two. Oh, we have to map this to a hash table. But it is a hash table. The hash table of chords. They're like a map values. Uh, oh, floors and objects might be empty, but I think there's checks for that downstream, right? Doing it this way. Floors in particular. Transform values. So I guess I don't, I don't need the chords after all. Uh, I say that's the tile. Uh, tile, I've currently got that exposed. Or it could, it, can, it could become a method later. So that changes the internal implementation of that such that we have a concept of a tile. Uh, it will, well, all of these tiles will be tagged with that. Anything that we set from outside will have an inappropriate timestamp. Which is the thing we need to work on. And objects for array. It doesn't have an object ID. Oh no, I, I didn't change my method. That map, it is transform values. Probably give me an array of the key and the value. Which I might have been able to work with. Okay, keyframe. Uh, we have to, I don't think I'm running the map log process right now. So that is internally tiled. To write my index, I'm going to need the tile objects with their timestamps. And that will probably be using the tile x, tile y. Oh, uh, copy key is still 
Oh, it's not working. Uh, this is going to be. Uh, this only copy objects and floors, not copy placement. This is uh, this is direct assignment. This is not necessarily making those dependent. Uh, although I think we were writing these incrementally. So that shouldn't or shouldn't affect us. So we need to have something on tiles. Hmm. <laughs> When we did this before was we create a new one and copy the information from the old one. Which you've currently exposed enough to do. Uh, no, we were setting base before and I don't know if base is going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing at a tile level. We'd like to be able to say, take that tile and clone it. Oh, it is going to be a new time. It'll be a new tile. I guess since it's copy, we'd have the start timestamp of our new thing. We have the coordinates of the old tile. Now transform values doesn't give us the old um, key. But it's going to be at the same coordinates, and the tile has the coordinates. Uh, but we've called that a required parameter. And right now it's set up to be new tile. Hmm. I mean, that's going to be true. I don't arguably should have had that already. Uh, self dot class dot new.
So this becomes Okay, so that's in tile. That's only in, uh, in there. Wrong number of, oh, yep, 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 yep. Where were you? Next span. Which looks awfully familiar. <laughs> okay, so this is not simple. P dot copy at s start. Friend use for hand. Object. Child placement log. And to find method object for hash. Pardon? Er? Out dot get object. Oh. Okay, you're not in a tile placement log. Okay, yes, that read. Need the tile. How much tile y? Board X Y tiles. Oh, mm, maybe this transform values isn't returning what I think it returns. Runs a new hash with the results of writing the block once for every value. The method does not change the keys. Oh, your copy key. That returns self. Object for nil. What? Tiles is a hash that always creates a new tile if you ask for it. Oh. No, it's a hash, so you should still be able to do hash operations that ask something. 
Now, once we've transformed it into the floors and objects, it'll still be sparse-ish. Uh, arguably, one thing we could do is actually like pre-filter this. And I don't transform keys, transform values. Oh, bar. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Delete every key value pair from hash, which, which block evaluates to true. We could sparse those as needed, uh, but how the heck do we get a nil in there? It's on the second pass. So this might be something weird in resumption logic. Still, the tile should always exist. I could see not returning something from object, but undefined method object for nil. We should never be able to just assign something to tiles cord. Okay, negative two, six. How the heck do we get a nil in you? I mean, that was a valid chord. We did do did the resume operation. Uh, but that's going to set something. I don't see how that can actually nil the hash. I transform values so that it is no longer a thing which inserts as needed. So we cannot do this. Uh, right, so we used to copy an expandable array. Uh, each value. would work since we've got the embedded coordinates. We're going to need them anyway, so. Oh, um, you're not just tile. You are tile.copy at s start. That's why we have to do all the fancy stuff here. Parallel arrays actually were kind of convenient for that part. Okay, forty two. And then the following one. Okay. 
Okay, so one placement that was carried over from the previous frame. Oh, now you see this always copies the timestamp. It's like every, you know, eventually want to get this to leave mode, in which case, not have it loaded unless it's fine. We're just copying the previous state we don't yet know. If there were any I need to lazy load from my previous state. At this moment in time, we do not know. And we'll be updated next. So it seems like we have to take our operation. Any time we do a write, copy without the timestamp. Want this my list of tiles? Immediate preview, probably not. Don't we want to keep timestamp old? And not even in the. Do I have to keep around my own pre? And I'm splitting a single file. Good. I need to do that by size, not by date. You just need a reference to previous, uh, which means it can't be garbage collected. And what if 
you go through multiples of these and you've kind of got that garbage collection chain going all the way back. The alternate to that is to keep the tiles around and keep their timestamp, and then at each pass, we only write out. I guess we could even probably even filter it here. Only write out the ones that have a current timestamp. It's a little bit of extra work on every single write. There's tile, tile objects are already some extra work too. Well, one way to solve the memory problem is to break this into two passes. One that splits out to temp files and one that processes each tile. And the advantage of that is that if we are breaking individual files, that still remains to be seen. what their sizes look like. Uh, you could load up a tile, because right now, well, now the reloads right now are happening partly as uh, eight zoom little for each tile. We could load up the baseline and then process it. Boom, 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 boom. It wouldn't be a huge amount of memory at that point. We were just splitting log lines. Now I have to do some tracking. I have to give each one a start time. But probably... Well, I still have to deal with adjacency. Well, it's not super simple. It might be a little bit simplified, and then each tile wouldn't have to, well. That. I think even even writing out final output files takes a little bit of time on the larger files.
Running out temp files does have a cost, but we have had problems with running things on Heroku, although maybe daily logs shouldn't be as bad. So I cannot just always copy that with a new start time. That's going to imply that it is new data when it might not be new data. Which means that every time we do a write to one of these, we're going to have to update to our current timestamp on that tile. Then we would filter out, well, those would be the new ones that had to be written out. And the index would have to get updated with all of those. So copy does not need a time. We copy it, it's the same as the old one, just without the placements. And then we have to have a method to update time because it might get touched. Uh, <laughs> so is that something where we tell the tile, well, okay, if you get updated, set your time to this, or to all of these methods, as every single, well, these set and remove methods need to have a time also. I could just have an updated flag. Maybe tiles don't, well, I'm thinking more of back at my level tiles. Time. But I'm not actually using that yet. I could have all these methods. You updated. Is that every pass we want the updated stuff, which will all be at the tiled start timestamp, or not just the end time. Yeah, that's going to be an image of the end timestamp. So I guess in a sense you could put the timestamp into every one of these. And the tile would report its last updated time. Well, no, it's going to want the whole thing to be in If each tile has its own timestamp, that could get messy. That would be work for the individual tile movie version. So 
So I actually need two updated flags. I need to know, well, I guess placements are just placements empty and placements full. That's not as big a deal. I retrieve it. Uh, go ahead and be self that updated anyway. Uh, updated. And let's see, doing each of these. <laughs> H1 only get the list of things that was updated. The index is going to have to be updated in response to that. Uh, so this is like needs to be a transform and a filter, but we need the coordinates. Where's the lead if? What's the hash returns true? That's a new hash. That's returning it to a list of floors. I'm gonna to have to do the up list of updated tiles every single time. Well, placements is placements. You could maybe filter out the empty one. That's not by itself going to give the big master image, but if I can get index load with timestamps, Oh, returns nil if no filters. No changes are made. Uh. Okay. Because it is supposed to be a change. So I need tiles that were updated. You have to produce twice. Once for floors, once for objects. But maybe we could start moving our external interface away from that. Yeah, so then the unupdated tiles wouldn't actually exist in that time step. It would have pointers to other ones.
a run check. See, it doesn't run. Uh, new tile. That's the filter for head. So this is a relatively recent method, apparently. Uh... Point four point one. Well, it's not going to get it a jump, jump, jump to that, is it? Keep if deletes. Does not say it returns a new. For which the block returns false. Wait. Entries for which the returns false. Yeah, filter would be nice here. Oh, wait. Filter. Oh, filter's a convenient method. For in Ruby, it's select. That was a convenience for JavaScript stuff. Do I do more of lately? Time. Err. Uh, and placement log. Oh, that constructor. I almost want to do some of this stuff in like Elm or something. But that raises a lot of problems in terms of fetching the files, dealing with S3. I guess that all has to be in. Now we're going from Ruby to, to like Node or something. Kind of makes for a messy environment. Okay, so you're still going to have that zero zero because. Now, you might see that it's not updated. Oh, yeah. There was much less stuff here. This is... Bra no, I might still have some load resumption going on. But loaded wasn't updated. So I need the index file to track that. We'll load our index. We will load those. We'll load all the ones that haven't expired. I, I want to get to it. Don't touch something and touch it. Automatic rollover is a lot easier to just copy it.
I wonder if I could split everything placement log. Right, kind of and then once we get a chunk. That helps. Although. Okay, so we have Well, yeah, four older tiles. So this is this is kind of where we're at. Uh, right, huh? <laughs> well, I have a reload process in there. I went through and called my set methods. And it's not writing out Because that should be just calling the method like it was an ordinary write, unless that ends up getting treated as. I think it's treated as a copy key. You. Away. No. The tiled set object, uh, maybe this gets treated as a copy key. Uh, no, I want you. Base. Okay, so you're doing copy key, which makes a bunch of new tiles that are not updated. but I don't want to reload everything. I want that to be the lazy loading. Uh, We do a whole bunch of stuff here, given a line. We have to handle our special lines. Else, it's a placement. And from about here on down, well, we're still doing some some updates of our output object here. Get floor, add placement, set floor. 
I mean, we, we pretty much know our tile. Well, we, we get a tile coordinates, and then we can get the tile. Remove floor, add placement, set object, add placement. I might be able to move all of that into tile. Oh, well, some of that into tile. When we start doing uh, adjacent tiles, then you have to have the list of tiles. We get our overs, and then this goes back to tile, and, well, this is only set for set object. This is not set, oh no, yeah, add placement. Uh, but I do a lot more logic on the regular one. Oh, I don't, hmm. You know, like, is it a floor? The removal, which for overs aren't not, don't matter as much. Size checks. I'm gonna have to think about. But that would move some of the stuff out of the big loop. Although now we're adding more method calls to it, which I already added quite a lot of method calls. Anyway, better than I wanted. I probably should get around to posting some of this as a, well, some of the data structure design stuff. I'm still keeping track of this big index is awkward. Seems like that might be simpler with the per tile indexes, but there's a lot of extra file overhead. Anyway, I uh, need to get to some step mania. So thanks to everybody who hosted me. Uh, I'll have to probably have to pick this back up Friday. That is about when I'm usually on, so hopefully we'll get into yeah, let's, let's break, breaking more more appropriately in the last couple times. Hmm. Oh, that's right. I just did a step menu. Anyway. anyway. What I'm about to do now, I will be back in a few minutes to do some step mania. And it'll take a few minutes to reset things, uh, change settings, then to set the dance pad. But uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> 